Welcome back to another episode of The Actors Room. My name's Jeff Tarowski. Sorry for the delay. It's been a while since I've put out shows. Um, sorry. The quarantine has gotten to me. It has. So, we're going to brush that off and talk about a documentary this show. And folks, the documentaries are getting more hits than my actors, my films. The one I did about the Aunt Diane one where she uh, killed eight people on the highway. It's like my most popular show in the past couple of months. By far. It's getting amazing hits. And I was, I'm blown away by it. I'm getting more responses from that show than any show I've ever done. Um, so that's what's going on. With the show. Uh, there's going to be more docs. So I hope that's okay. And it's okay with me. I love talking about docs. So I picked this one this week. It's called. The Brothers Keeper. The Ward Brothers. I am actually think it's just called. Brothers Keeper. The Ward Brothers. Done in 1992. Directed by. Bruce Sanofsky. And Joe Ber- 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 Joe Berlinger. <laughs> I got to tell you something. I've uh, made a lot of mistakes already. I think it's just because I haven't done a show in a while. I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> Bear with me. I'm messing up a little bit. That's my show. The bloopers are in the show. A lot of other podcasts you listen to, you don't hear people messing up. It's because they go back and they erase it. That's a fact. In my show, I hardly do that. So when I mess up, you hear it. And I just did. Bear with me. We're going to get through this. This is a great documentary in 1992. It's been a while. It's been out for a while. And it's just one of those docs that makes you, uh, you're swayed one way or another uh, because of compassion. Um. And we'll get through all of the things that are brought to the table in this doc. Um, Please go see it. It's on YouTube. You put in Brothers Keeper. Comes up. I think it's also under the Ward Brothers. And it's free. You can watch it for free on YouTube. It's been on YouTube for a long time. And that's probably how I saw it. I'm a doc freak. And I thought about this documentary um, about three days ago. Uh, sitting down, uh, eating my breakfast, and it just popped in my head. Uh, a doc that I haven't seen in a while that always intrigued me. And this one popped in. So I hope you sit back, try to relax, grab that beverage, Pepsi, Coke, water, tea, beer, whiskey, martini, or your favorite bottle of wine. Red or white. I prefer red. (laughs) I hope you enjoy this show. Here we go. All right. It's been so long since I've done this. I, it feels good to be back here uh, talking about stuff, talking about docs, uh, actors, actresses, movies. It's just great. And I hope all of you out there are feeling good. Um, I hope everybody's healthy. And things are going to start going back to normal very soon. So in the meantime, let's talk about Brother's Keeper. This is what happened. Now, the doc was put out in 1992. And this whole situation is going on in live time. That's what Joe Berlinger and Bruce Sanofsky love to do. Uh, they f- I don't know how they find out about these certain situations going on. But they just have contacts. Like, hey, get your ass over here. There's a, a murder case that's very interesting Bring your cameras. Uh, It's going to be 
a very intriguing uh, film to cut and to just sink your teeth into because it's all about morals. It's about compassion. And the town that this takes place in is it's in the New York uh, area, uh, New York State, a farming community out in the middle of nowhere, a small farming community. I mean, okay, let's just put it this way. Most of these people look like they have just been through it. A hard life. When you're working on a farm, it is hard work. It's every day. You don't get any days off on the farm. You're working every day. And you're working hard. It's a different kind of life. A different world. And you get a peek into that world with this doc. These are people that work their asses off. And it's a small community. So they're very... uh, proud of what they stand for uh, who they're all about and just having respect for their little town because it is small and they're all like the same people they all have uh, farms to take care of uh, and for the most part they, they really do mind their own business so this is the situation let's go ahead and set this up We know the setting. So what happened, Jeff? What's this all about? Well, they're four brothers. Their mother and father have passed. And it's just four brothers. Their ages are all around, I want to say, mid-60s, early 70s. Four brothers. Delbert, William, Lyman, and Roscoe. And all four of them, pretty much, they all look the same, yes. You could tell they're brothers. But it's, it's hard to describe them. They really are living in their own, not only world and reality, but like a different dimension to me. What I see these four guys. I think they went into town... Very sporadically to, to go into town Like they would go into town because they had to And that's it They lived on that farm 99% of the time With each other And that's it And their farm animals And their work And they don't talk about the parents too much But we know they're gone So it's just the four guys Well William And we'll call him Bill One of the brothers was very ill, so sick that he would be crying out in pain at night during the day. His head would hurt him. His stomach would hurt him. And he had been in some sort of accident on the farm with a chainsaw and also got stepped on. By one of the farm animals. With his foot. He had foot problems. He had uh, head problems. Stomach problems. From what I gather. I think he had cancer. It was the later stages of the cancer. And the other brothers sort of had to deal with this. I mean not only Bill dying. At the farm. In their house. But the brothers having to see a loved one go through cancer. And I'm sure that Bill didn't have the proper treatments, medications, pain relievers to get him through this. I mean, he was dying. He was dying right in front of them. (sighs) Tough. Tough. And it's rumored that uh, Roscoe, Delbert, and Lyman talked amongst themselves under the tree outside the property. They had a little meeting. And in that meeting, 
they talked about a few things to correct the situation. What are we going to do about Bill? Delbert said, we got to take care of this. We have to put him out of his misery. And they talked about how they were going to do it. Delbert first said that he would use a shotgun. Roscoe said, or Lyman, I don't know which one said, that's a bad idea, shouldn't do that. Uh, too messy. That, that's true. <laughs> uh, that would be messy. Yeah. Um, so they came up with the idea of suffocating him. Cleaner, right? Well, of course, Bill dies. Paramedics come. And during the autopsy, it was found that there was questions about how he died. Delbert said it was natural causes. And the rest of the brothers agreed. But did they? The police say Delbert confessed at the very start and said he did suffocate his brother because he was dying and he wanted to get rid of his pain. And even signed a document confirming this. The other brothers in the very beginning backed it up. So I'm just wondering why all of a sudden after this Delbert and the other brothers recanted. If you're going to come straight on up and admit you did it. <laughs> and then like moments later say, oh, I'm just a bumpkin farmer out in the middle of nowhere, uh, old, uh, I don't read, I don't see very well. I'm just, you know, kind of stupid. I, I didn't mean it. I, I didn't kill my brother. I'm taking it back. Okay, and the rest of the community, after hearing what happened with Bill, just completely backed up Delbert. Delbert was accused because he admitted it in the beginning. <laughs> but not now. He's taken it back. So the cops made him sign the document. The cops put the words in his mouth. Why would they do that? Think about this. Why would the cops want Delbert to be a murderer here? Because when you walk into a situation like that, where Bill dies, it looks like natural causes. They're in their 60s and 70s. They really didn't take care of themselves. You watch this doc. Oh my God. Those, those three brothers, they look Horrible. Hygiene? They don't know what that means. Okay. Uh, I think bath time is once every calendar year. And maybe they all get into the tub together. And do a little washy time. I mean, we're talking uh, way out there. Like, these guys look like they belong in the middle of the woods somewhere. Chopping down trees. Uh, sleeping in tents. Uh, when you take a look at the inside of their house, it looks like they never cleaned it. Never. Not once. Not one time. Not once. Did any of those brothers pick up a broom or a wet nap or anything concerning cleanliness? No rags. <laughs> no Lysol. Uh, nothing. Nothing. That place was filthy, dirty, filthy, hoarder-like. You would agree if you see the doc. Uh, let's just put it this way. Would you want to spend one day there? You, watching this doc, would you spend one day in that house? Just one. I wouldn't. I, I don't think I would uh, like to be in there for, for 15 minutes. Maybe just out of curiosity to walk through that place and go, Holy shit, how can you live here? wrong with you people yeah they didn't you know they're simple simple men okay and that's how they lived in just squalor they had a tv though he knew who uh um merv griffin was because he watched matlock 
Delbert. <laughs> and this another thing is is lowly educated as three brothers are, uh, and they were. I'm sure they quit school at a very young age to work in the farm, so on. In some parts of the world, that's just how it goes. Uh, working on the farm is more important than learning your ABCs. And it seems to me that Delbert and his other two brothers weren't educated. I'm not saying they're stupid. They just weren't educated. There's two different things. Extremely two different things. Um, so I want to get back to my main focus in this whole situation and what and what I look at when viewing this is the way the community backed up Delbert it was almost like they couldn't see it Delbert murdering his brother whether it was a mercy kill or not they just didn't understand it he would never do that no way And they say that at face value. But do they feel that deep down? I think those are two different things as well. Are they just supporting their guy? And saying fuck you to the FBI. Um, all those urban people. Okay. Uh, it's like herbal. Herbal. Urban. Herbal. Herbal. <laughs> it's urban versus rural. You know you get the. Big city against the bumpkins, the, you know, the farm people, you know, this close knit community. But how close were they to Delbert? Not that close because the brothers, they really didn't uh, socialize with the other townspeople. They didn't. So they're just supporting their community, period, their way of life. Like the big city can't come in here. And say that Delbert did this. That's wrong. He's an old man. And you should just leave him be. Well wait a minute. I, I disagree. And looking at it from my perspective. Watching this doc. You know, I don't live in that small town. I mean I lived in a big city. But I grew up in the suburbs. So I'm not really a big city guy. And I get the whole community thing. I get it. There's community in New York City. There's community in the suburbs. And the same can be said in a small town. A farming community. But just because you live in a little town doesn't give you the right or the privilege to say we're back in our guy and shame on you for making these accusations. How dare you? This is our way of life. He must be innocent. I say uh, shame on you. If there is evidence that Delbert possibly murdered his brother, you got to look into it. And the way that the townspeople, they just can't see it. Most of them anyway. There is an interview given by one of the other town's members. And he said he believed that Delbert did murder him. And he could see it. I mean, his brother Bill was in a lot of pain. Wailing in the middle of the night. You got to see it from the other brother's perspective as well. Their brother Bill is dying in agony. And they have to hear the cries. And deal with that. So they may have acted in a selfish way as well. That they just didn't want to hear the screams anymore. They didn't want to deal with Bill anymore. And it's almost like doing the humane thing. But you're still murdering somebody. And the way they did it, Delbert suffocated his brother. Which means he had to put his hand on Bill's mouth. I couldn't do that. Could you do that? I don't care how much pain, say, my wife is in, wailing and screaming. I could never, ever put my hand over her mouth and kill her. No, sir. No way. But that is the accusation made towards Delbert. He did the humane thing 
in taking his brother away from his pain. And their pain as well, watching him die. But how dare we bring up these accusations? Delbert would never do this. Well, why do you say that? You know him so well, they barely knew him. They were backing their way of life. And I find this to be so intriguing. Because it's almost like they're, they're sticking up for a cause. Not really a person. They are, in a way, sticking up for Delbert. Sure. But are they really? Are they more sticking up for themselves? Because there is a possibility that Delbert murdered his brother. Even though they can't see it, it's possible. And on the stand during trial, there are experts that come up and say, uh, I saw evidence of suffocation. And then there's other experts that come up and say, I didn't see any evidence of suffocation. And I love this. You get two separate opinions in court. One saying, yes, during the autopsy, I saw uh, spots of blood on his esophagus. It's a, a sign that there was a struggle with breathing. Um, and that's what I think. And then the other guy says that I didn't find anything. If you're putting a pillow or a hand over someone's mouth, they're going to be forceful, you know, trying to suck air. And in doing so, uh, not being successful, they'll start retching, which means, you know, you'll throw up. And this guy's saying this on the stand, mind you. And while I'm watching this doc, I'm going, wait a minute. Um, that might be true. If somebody is being suffocated, they're getting so upset, like they can't breathe. You know, <gasps> they get sick or something like comes up because they're so upset. Absolutely. But not in every circumstance. If someone is killed, murdered, being suffocated, can't, can't breathe. It doesn't mean that you're going to retch. You're going to throw up. Just because there were no signs of that. It doesn't mean he wasn't suffocated. So I really don't trust that opinion. I think I'm going to look at uh, the autopsy guy and trust him a little bit more. I think that the autopsy guy has done many autopsies. And although he can't say 100% that he was suffocated, he saw evidence of that possibility. The percentages go more in favor of that than not. That's why it was all brought up, the speculation. Because once again, I'm going to go back to this. Why were the cops or the people that investigated this thing pinpoint Delbert of committing murder? I, I don't see the point of it. Like We're just going to randomly pick this guy because what? We don't like him? Nobody really even knew him. Uh, these three brothers, they never caused any trouble. They minded their own business. They ran their farm. Uh, and that was that. So why would the cops, just out of fucking nowhere, uh, try to blame this guy for murder? Like, I don't see why they would do that. But the townspeople, they have a reason. This is their reason. Their land. The prospects coming out and taking their land for... Uh, business. They say that the farm was valuable. I'm sure it is. And was wanted for like condos. Okay. I took a look at this area. Folks. There is There would be no reason why. Anybody would want that farm for condos. Because it's out in the middle of nowhere. There, there's no reason why. The, the townspeople bring this up like. Uh, there are people. Investors. Just coming out of the woodwork to wanting to grab the land out of everybody in that town. That's not true at all. They're just making stuff up. That's the way I see it. Because even somebody else said, uh, one of the FBI investigators said, that is an absolutely ridiculous statement or accusation. Nobody is banging on the doors of these townspeople to build on their land. So that doesn't make any sense. And during the doc, you see, get to see like the prosecutor talk, uh, head of the, the, 
the FBI or just an FBI worker and other uh, law enforcement people talking about the case. And they're talking so calm about it. It's just like, so, you know, Delbert uh, confessed at the beginning and, and then, you know, we found the evidence. So if we have a suspicion, we're going to, you know, act on that. And, you know, these are the facts and that's it. And then you have the townspeople just all emotional, you know, like, oh, my God, you know, how dare they do these things and these accusations? Well, because it's possible that Delbert murdered his brother. So putting all that other stuff that I just talked about. And although I think it's pretty simple, other people that watch this doc would disagree. 90% of the people out there disagree with me. I think I went and looked at the comments on this doc on YouTube and almost everybody was backing Delbert. Oh my gosh, justice was served because of course he was found innocent of all charges. And it was the right call. There wasn't enough evidence for Delbert to go to jail for his brother. There wasn't. They didn't have enough evidence. So justice actually was served in a way. Although I think Delbert did do it. I think he did. I think it was a mercy, mercy killing. Mercer. It was a mercy killing. Delbert did. And it takes a certain kind of person to do what he did. Okay. And you could see it in his face. Folks, when you watch the doc, you could see it in his eyes. And the eyes of an adult say so much. They really do. When you look into their eyes, Delbert's eyes were filled with just confusion, pain, uh, hurt, uh, everything, worry. You could see it in his eyes that even the guilt, even the guilt was seeping through. And Take a look at how it affected the other two brothers, Roscoe and Lyman. I mean, they were just completely uh, exhausted, spent about the whole thing. Of course, denying it to protect Delbert because they were in on it. But you could tell it was killing them what they did and what they backed it up on. I mean... The one looked like a little, like a little, I don't know, like a little vermin. Uh, He was like, he's like, I'm, I'm anxious all the time. I was just, I was born anxious. I'm just anxious. And he's shaking. You can barely understand these guys, you know, a simple way of life, the simple way of talking that they have, um, very thick accents. It's hard to understand them. And just the way they act, you get, they're acting fishy, very suspicious. And was it Lyman? I mean, they talked to him like the the document producers, the documentary producers, Joe Berlinger, asking him questions. They're, a- they're answering him as well as they can. Okay. But Dodgy and uh, Lyman, like, he goes into his house and he doesn't use the door. He uses, like, I don't know, drywall that's like crooked enough where he can like, he, he like weasels his way in the house through the drywall. Really weird. A different world, folks. They look guilty to me. They do. So here's the question for all you out there. Even though Delbert <laughs> was found innocent, Okay. How do you feel about if he did kill his brother? And I think he did. That's what I think. How do you feel about that? Would you do that? And if he did, are you okay with it? A mercy killing. Euthanasia, it's called. Catholic Church in most of society. See, that is a major sin. Killing somebody. Mercy killing. Somebody is dying. And you sort of, you know, speed up that process. That's a no-no. It's murder. 
You're messing with natural stuff. You got to let them go naturally. And it's not for you to make a decision on, really. And even if the person says, kill me right now, it's still wrong. You can't do it. It's murder still. And don't get me started on abortion. Because <laughs> that's the other way around. You got old people uh, dying, okay? You can't just say, you know, uh, inject them with something, you know, kill their pain, done. Can't do it. But it's okay to uh, end a life that hasn't really even begun. Folks, you get me started on abortion, my phone will be thrown up against the wall. <laughs> I've been passionate about that subject since I was five. When I was first told about it in school, I went to Catholic school, okay? So, I mean, I was raised that way. I mean, abortion is not a good thing in the Catholic religion. And I was told that uh, in the very beginning of my life, and I agreed with it, and still do today. Today. The one thing I remember learning about in Catholic school was that. And going, by God, killing babies? Like, that just Okay, we're going to stop that right now because I know this is touchy and people, most people disagree with me on that too. But this is my show. And I'm honest. I'm not beating around the bush. You know that about me. And I'm sorry. As, as much as Delbert was helping the situation, he was still breaking the law by doing so. A mercy killing is not allowed, but he did it. Is that okay? For me? It's not. Can't do that. But then you take a step back and, and, and look at the whole thing again and go, well, wait a minute. His brother was in a great deal amount of pain and Delbert helped him by making that decision for him unless Bill said, it's okay, do it. <laughs> Suffocate me? Doubtful. I'm sure Bill didn't say, hey, Dell, take your hand, put it over my mouth until I stop breathing. Delbert and the brothers made that call. Delbert went in there at night. And I think he said, and this was in the very first confession, it took about five minutes. And I looked this up. That is true. That's about as long as it takes. Folks, it's not a quick process. Because when you suffocate somebody, I guess, and you got the hand over the mouth and they stop breathing, right? You think that's it. They're dead. No. (laughs) No. Because as soon as they stop breathing, you take it away. It means they just like passed out and like it'll come back. Like, you got to keep your hand on there. Man. My younger brother, Dave, when he was really little, uh, would hold his breath in his crib, I guess. And would hold it until he passed out. (laughs) I mean, it's possible. These things, like, you could get so upset. Like, my brother would get so upset. He'd hold his breath and cry. And what's funny is my mom said, you know, she would hear this, like this crying, oh my God. And she'd go in the room and she'd see him, his face beat red because he's holding his breath. <laughs> and then, boom, he would fucking freaking pass out. And then he'd start breathing again. Wow. Kids, right? <laughs> Kids. But Delbert, killing Bill. Mm. What an interesting doc. An interesting topic. What's right? What's wrong? Whose side are you on? Most people think justice was served. Delbert didn't do it. Because he said he didn't do it. Well, that's not enough for me. There was evidence that he did. And it kind of makes sense that he did. So that's okay? He could just get away with it. And I love in the doc, at the very end, they put Delbert's brother, one of the brothers. And mind you, they are 60, 70 years old. Not very healthy and scared. 
They put one of them on the stand, <clears throat> asking him questions about what happened. And the guy is, he can't even talk. He's so scared, nervous, because I think deep down, he doesn't want to say something, you know, wrong. He's trying to give all the right answers. He's so petrified. And he should be. Your brother Delbert probably killed Bill. And you know it. You're scared. He's so scared, they had to stop the questioning and he had to leave the courtroom. And they talked to the townspeople afterwards. And they're just shaken by the whole experience. Like, how dare they put him on the stand? It's just inhumane. I've seen them treat animals better than that. And I say, just shut the fuck up. What makes that brother so special? Because he's old? Um, bad excuse. Because he just might be unhealthy? Once again, bad excuse. This is a trial for murder. And he was there. The brother was there that night. He should be questioned and put on the stand. This is my disagreement about the people that back the situation for Delbert here. What makes them so special? Because they're old and they live on a farm? In a small community? That makes them special. Uh, How dare we bring them up on charges? How dare we actually put them on the stand? That's inhumane. It's just because they're old. And we should just take it for what they say. Because we're good people. Like the one guy said, there's never been a murder charge in this county. Well, there's always a first time for everything. Right? Right? Just because there's never been a murder in that town doesn't mean it'll never happen. Chances are in time, probably will. Um, And although we're going to wrap this up, I have to bring up this tidbit before I wrap it all up. In the actor's room, hello. (laughs) The doc uh, took a little bit of a uh, spin on the doc. uh, A twist, actually. The lawyer... The defense lawyer defending Delbert gets all the townspeople together to sort of get them all uh, sort of on the same page. What's going on? Because everybody's concerned about it. Of course. It's a big deal. The lawyer explains that the prosecuting team is coming up with all these uh, reasons why Delbert would kill his brother. I mean, they need motive, right? It's not enough that it was a mercy killing. They kind of have to Come up with new things. That's what the defense lawyer says. And one of the things the prosecutors brought up. (laughs) eh, hmm. One of the things the prosecuting team brought up. Was during uh, the investigation afterwards. The death. They went ahead and tested everything. And getting samples of things. And found that on the crime scene. They found sperm. Now. Um, hey, these are uh, you know, human beings here with urges, right? Sperm was found at the scene on uh, Bill's clothes. There was sperm on his clothes. Um, he could have, you know, taken care of himself sometime during the day, right? That's unlikely because he was kind of dying. But you also have to think about this. They didn't really change their clothes very often. So the sperm might be old. I'm not quite sure how long sperm stays uh, where you can detect it. (laughs) Was it fresh sperm or was it sperm from three months ago? Um, But sperm was found at the scene and uh, there were no women in that place. No. So, hey. Uh... It could be that, hey, the brothers were close. Another world, ladies and gentlemen, in the actor's room, is called Brother's Keeper. (laughs) 
house. When I heard that too, I, I know, it's like, oh, God. Hey, it could be, you know, uh, uh, the brothers helping each other out. <laughs> like I said, another world. Like another dimension for me. Uh, get out. I'm sure they had some activities going on in that town. You know what I mean? These guys like to stay in. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this show. Um, I'm sorry if I gave you a visual that was very uneasy, unethical, and downright disgusting. That's life. <laughs> it was put in the dock and it had to be brought up because it's just... <laughs> I don't mean to make fun because uh, I, I really believe this is a serious subject here. Uh, it really is no laughing matter. Although the sperm thing is kind of funny. <laughs> you can put a light thing on there. <laughs> Keep it light. Um, the bottom line, what's right and what's wrong. That, that is the whole point. Um, and something to chew on. Watch the doc. Done in 1992. It was probably like HBO, I'm thinking. Um, if not, it was just a doc made in 1992 in some small town. I find small town stuff to be so intriguing, uh, the way they live, because I've never done that. And I'm just interested to learn about that. The way they talk and the way they back each other up is incredible. I mean, uh, Amazing to me. Hey, how they could just blindly, really blindly support Delbert. They did. Uh, they blindly support this guy. Uh, Delbert and his brothers had about three friends. And the one real close friend uh, really stood by them, uh, sticking up for them, um, just supporting them. And it was good to see that. They, they should have that. Because there is a chance that Delbert didn't murder his brother. I mean, there's a chance of that. I could be wrong. Delbert might be completely innocent in this whole thing. And I'm wrong. Uh, Delbert didn't live too long afterwards. It, they all look pretty unhealthy to me. Um, I'm not sure if any of the brothers are still alive. I doubt it. Um, they were old back then. Um, so, wow. Uh, bambling? Bambling. Uh, babbling? <laughs> Getting loopy here? It's a uh, Friday. It's been raining since 9 o'clock this morning. It's about 7 o'clock at night. My backyard is flooded. Wow. It has been raining nonstop. I love it. I love the rain. And hope it continues throughout the night so I can sleep. I love sleeping to the rain. And thank you for listening to The Actors Room. Doing more docs. Because they're interesting. Fun. And uh, bring up topics that are juicy, thought-provoking. I hope you walk away from my show, watch the doc, and it makes you think. What's wrong with that? I love that. It brings up something you never thought of before. In these certain situations that happen, um, they happen for a reason. It makes us think about other things in our lives, outside the box. It's good for you. It's healthy for you. Especially at this time. Being all locked up. We need stuff to make us, I don't know, stretch our brains. <laughs> Work out your brain, people. Do it, right? Kids are doing the best they can right now. Online stuff. I haven't been to work in like a month and a half. It's just nuts. I'm hoping to get back in a few weeks. I think in a few weeks I'm going back. I need to go back. I need my normal life back. I get to the point where I'm doing so much around the house. I get depressed. And I used to love doing stuff around the house. Now it's just like sometimes I don't feel like doing it. And it worries me. Like, whoa. I always feel like doing stuff around the house. I do. 
but I'm getting depressed some days. It just damn. Um, so there you go. Hope all is well. Coming back at you, hopefully soon. I think I'm doing back to back episodes here. Uh, gonna release. My, uh, I, I'm sure I released my Corey Haim episode already. I hope you liked it. And then this one, shortly after that. Brothers Keeper, the Ward Brothers. Wow, what a story. Hope all is well once again. My name's Jeff Tarowski. Please subscribe to the show on iTunes. Go on to YouTube. My show is on YouTube. I got Facebook page, Instagram account, Twitter, and all that stuff. Support the show. Go on the website, www.theactorsroom.lipson.com. I have a donate button on my show, right-hand side. You got to use a computer to make a donation. You can't do it on your phone. You got to get on a desktop. Go on to my website. On the first page, on the right side, is a donate button. I don't make any money doing this. I don't have any support coming from uh, advertisers. Anything I make is through donations. So anything is appreciated. Uh, it gives me drive to continue the show. I'm approaching 100 episodes. I can't wait. I'm going to do Marlon Brando again. And I'm going to do him better. A lot to talk about with more about that guy. Lots more. And I'm going to do that. Number 100. Might be a few more docs in between. Maybe an actor. Maybe a movie. Maybe not. Maybe the show will just shut down completely. Out of nowhere. Boom. Gone. Doubtful. I like doing the show. So see you next time. Take care. God bless you. Have a good one.